Felix, uh, you may be feeling down. Uh, you talked about wellness. I'd like to spend the rest of the show now uh, doing, a, doing a reading series on an amazing article that came out in the New York Times today that is very much sort of um, uh, of a piece with uh, sim- similar investigations we've done on this show into like the psychology of the ultra wealthy. Like I remember a while back we were talking about how they want to like genetically design their children and seed the world with their uh, progeny. Um, then there's the whole like, you know, uh, the, the, the people who are, uh, have Havana syndrome because of their rotten guilt about the, their shitty jobs. I'd like to talk now about uh, 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 Charles Koch's daughter, who is a wellness Ooh. guru. Charles Koch is like the, the, the daughter of one of the richest men on the planet. And this is like a glowing New York Times profile of her and her like wellness startup. And I would just like to use, I would just like to use this example because like, look. The New York Times has come in for some criticism lately. You know, uh, criticism that I think is unfair. You know, journalists aren't supposed to be activists. They're supposed to objectively report the news and let the reader decide for themselves what the facts are or how they feel about controversial issues. So, like, this, this, is, this is real journalism from the New York Times. This is not activist journalism. This is real, serious news from the New York Times. Headline, Elizabeth Koch knows what you're thinking. The daughter of Charles Koch, the billionaire right-wing political force, has a new venture that is all about self-investigation. Two words, perception box. That's right. We're getting in the box. What's in the box? Perception. Perception. Yeah. Uh, This is by Brooks Barnes. Perception box. Perception box. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm the asshole for putting the binoculars in a girl's pussy. (laughs) Uh, just a point of clarification: Would this be Wyatt Cox's cousin? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, very yeah. good so, catch. <laughs> okay, great. Just, we know we know Wyatt con- is connecting the doing, dots of this generation of of Coke children. Yeah, Wyatt is making shirts for the discotheca or the office. Elizabeth Coke is opening the boxes of perception, or rather, freeing you from the the perception box that you're trapped in. Yeah. So uh, the perception box sounds like a really shitty item from uh, <laughs> Dark Souls 1. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I can, uh, I, I can uh, aim my pyromancy in first-person mode. Thanks. Uh, so the article begins. Even as a young girl, Elizabeth R. Koch was keenly aware of her family's extreme wealth. My beloved parents... No way. They were paranoid about raising spoiled pieces of, you know... So I heard about it a lot, and I could see how other people responded to us, she said. I sensed it everywhere. She added, I didn't get that it was about the family. I'm just seeing that it's about me, so I must be bad. So she decided to dedicate her life to one pursuit, to not be hated, she said, to which I say, fail. You have failed in that regard. Uh, Continuing, uh, Mrs. Koch, 47, is the daughter of Charles Koch, 87, the billionaire industrialist, climate change boogeyman, and far-right political force. His wealth is estimated at roughly $66 billion. Ms. Koch, named after her mother, who goes by Liz. The family is close. Everyone spent Christmas together in Las Vegas, staying at the Wynn Resort and taking in a mentalist show. I like to imagine that they were just went to the Wind Resort and watched the TV series The Mentalist yeah. together in a hotel Simon room. Simon Baker just chopping it yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, but Ms. But Ms. Koch, at least by her account, has been driven to the brink of insanity by her last name. In a 2007 essay for Smith Magazine, she described her young adulthood as panic attacks and meltdowns and doctors and pharmaceuticals and terrifying my parents and staring down that dark well of nothing you do will ever be good enough, you privileged waste of flesh. A couple years later, she lied to classmates at Syracuse University when she was working on an MFA in fiction, insisting that her name was pronounced Koch, no relation to those Cokes, the one you may have read sinister things about. So we're, we're seeing here like, a legitimate daughter. Yeah. <laughs> he was actually yeah, straight. Like, yeah, yeah. Those rumors time. you heard about him, not true. Yeah, he, uh, well, he tried pussy once, and uh, wow. <laughs> Got a great daughter out of the deal. Um, but like, you know, we're beginning to see like we're gonna see themes emerge here is that like she says she says that she finds her life um defined by uh the wealth that she knows that she is the inheritor of, but also a sense of unease about like people's negative feelings about her, the family name, and just how they got all that sixty-six billion dollars. So 
yeah, like, oh, so the question is, uh, like, how is she going to manifest this sense of guilt and shame? Because the article, as it goes on, I think you'll see, like, she, she comments a lot about how she's worried that people may dislike her, but she never really cottons to or uh, uh, seems to understand or express the reasons why people might hate her family. Mrs. Koch's, Ms. Koch's anguish uh, may strike you as entirely understandable. Money can be corrosive, especially for the generation that didn't make it. Or you may have the opposite reaction. It must be really, really hard, I roll, to be a her heiress of one of the biggest fortunes ever accumulated who graduated from an Ivy League university, Princeton, and is now married to a successful biotech entrepreneur. They recently vacationed in Bali. When Ms. Koch first came on my radar, I was firmly in the second camp. Oh, so let's see how she, she won you over with her perception box. A publicist named Scott Rowe had called to propose an article on Mrs. Koch and her nonprofit organization, Unlikely Collaborators, which is all about self-investigation. According to its website, the organization is dedicated to the creation of provocative experiences that help you face who you think you are. The site You're adds, not supposed to <laughs> admit that you got the story from the publicist. <laughs> yeah, know, right? and, say, and then say right off the bat, like, uh, I was inclined to be skeptical of this rich dilettante and her fucking idiotic wellness coordination uh, self-investigation startup. But I got to say, even a skeptical journalist like me was won over to her uh, by her charms and uh, fascinating personal story. Like Jeez, I said, this is, by the way, this is not activist right. journalism. This is real journalism. Good. Okay, uh, he goes, the site adds, our experiences use a process of self-investigation that encompasses principles and practices from Eastern and Western thought, meditation, psychology, and neuroscience designed to expand your understanding of self, others, and the whole damned world. Oh, brother. Mr. Rowe kept pushing, telling me that Ms. Koch started Unlikely Collaborators in 2021 after emerging from years of depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, an eating disorder, and a stint in a mental institution. Serious people have joined Unlikely Collaborators in leadership roles, including Lisa Gregorian, uh, a former president of the Warner Brothers Television Group. So far, Unlikely Collaborators has given millions of dollars to various partners and earmarked at least $100 million for the next few years. Your perception is wrong, Mr. Rowe said. Just come meet her. The next, the subhead for the next section is entitled "Hugs, Blankets, and Perception Boxes." So this is this house is going to be one over with a, with a blanket. So it says here, unlike, unlikely collaborators occupies a sunny loft in Santa Monica, California, a community once described as where liberal ideology meets the sea. On the afternoon I visited, candles flickered here and there. Someone had put out what looked like twenty pounds of charcuterie. Twenty pounds of charcuterie. Hot day. Wow. <laughs> okay. Someone likes their nitrates. <laughs> uh, Miss Gregorian, the profits, nonprofit's president, was tucked into a stylish chair near Zach Gorin, a former investment banker and private equity investor who is Miss Koch's finance and operations chief. Suddenly, Miss Koch stood before me with outstretched arms, soliciting a hug. Before we begin, she said, Would you like a blanket? I declined and we settled into a conference room. I expected her to be guarded in keeping with her father's approach to the news media. Instead, she spoke excitedly for nearly two hours, telling me about her circuitous path to middle age, salting her sentences with profanity and referring to herself as a privileged, pasty white girl from the Midwest. She talked oh, about exploring... No. <laughs> Wait, you're, tell you're telling me she's a self-deprecating... I know I'm a white girl, but, you know, believe me, this th this white girl has a little bit of spice in her. No, uh, no way. Uh, well, she says um, <laughs> she's not just a privileged, pasty white girl from the Midwest. She talked about exploring, quote, pain holes with a therapist and going on two weeks silent retreats. She insisted that she was apolitical. So there's the perception box. But what's, you, like, what's keeping you inside the perception box is the fact that you're in a pain hole. And Ms. Koch has spent, spent years investigating the pain holes that she's experienced simply for being one of the richest people on the planet. I would like her to uh, try the perception box from the Cameron Diaz film, The Box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she says here, mostly Ms. Koch wanted to explain something called the perception box, a term she trademarked in 2021. So hopefully we'll not be getting a bill uh, no, from no. collaborating industries on a uh, repetition of the phrase perception box. Trademark uh, Liz Koch, 2021. So it says here, uh, unlikely collaborators is built around the concept which Ms. Koch wants to use to prompt a global movement of self-investigation. 
We all, quote, we all live inside an invisible but ever-present mental box, a perception box, Ms. Koch began. The, this box distorts our perceptions of everything and everyone around us. It distorts our ability to understand other people, to see them clearly, to connect with them. And it distorts our ability to really even know ourselves. She adjusted the blanket on her lap. Most of the external conflict, messiness, and miscommunication in the world, in corporations, in relationships, in families, in every aspect of our lives, is caused by internal conflict, Ms. Koch continued. And most of the internal conflict is caused by unconscious beliefs that we have been carrying around since we are very young, like zero to five, that we project on everyone around us. Are you guys, are you guys following me here? Are you, are, are you with me? How, how, how do you regard the perception box? Wow, this woman, is, this woman <laughs> is a fucking genius. So she's saying <laughs> that like events from our childhood affect who we are as adults. Yes. Holy fuck. And it's all part of a box? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Uh, can someone get, um, I don't know, Sigmund Freud on the horn? <sighs> Someone has just improved on several of his theories. Unlikely Collaborators intends to help people become aware of their perception boxes through workshops, lectures, and summits. In 2021, Ms. Koch led a workshop for the Los Angeles chapter of the Red Cross. More recently, she has been offering a, a workshop entitled, what I, think, what, what I Think You Think About Me. Unlikely Collaborators also plans to publish books and eventually produce films with perception box themes. <laughs> Uh, and they say there's yeah. nothing to look forward to. <laughs> uh, uh, it's the final frontier for the ultra rich. It's you can never be satisfied. Obviously, you, you, there's always a hole. Uh, and, and in previous generations of wealth, there was always some worldly goal that you could strive towards and could fill your days and to fill the kind of the quiet moments when you might otherwise reflect on what you've done and where you are. Uh, but now we're at a point where the world has been fully conquered by capital. These people are just sitting on top of unprecedented amounts, but, and they need a fucking horizon. And, you know, some of them have fantasized about going to space or, or living forever, but like none of those compared to the ultimate, uh, unfulfillable goal. And that is reaching into the minds of other people and making them like you. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's and like That's the final <laughs> frontier. I don't even think it's that much, though. I think she's like, I don't know. I think this fucking doofy lady just invented therapy. <laughs> yes. But like, it's coming from a place of wondering why uh, she never liked herself or why other people never liked her. And the answer to that, they're either in a pain hole or they're stuck in a perception box. And like, you know, it's true. There's no amount of money in the world that can fill your pain hole if you have yeah. one. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? In addition, unlikely collaborators invest in companies and nonprofit organizations that are allied with its mission. Ms. Koch said she helped fund and hopes to develop curriculum for Moral Courage College. <laughs> is this is Barry Weiss teaching there? Is she a fellow at Moral Courage College? I don't know. That like, sounds more like a uh, a David Brooks joint. Is he is he yeah. the, the proctor there or whatever the fuck? Yeah, uh, Second Mountain University. Uh, Moral Courage College describes its purpose as training people to lower their emotional defenses so that contentious issues can be turned into constructive conversations. So, yeah, there you go. Moral Courage College is about getting all of us to lower our natural defenses against this kind of horseshit so that we can be continue to be poisoned and robbed blind by the demon spawn of the Charles Koch empire. <clears throat> Millions of dollars have gone to SIY Global, a firm that provides mindfulness and emotional intelligence training. Ms. Koch and unlikely collaborators have also donated money to a, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, which, among other things, conducts research into the mental health benefits of MDMA, the club drug popularly known as Ecstasy and Molly. I know this is going, I, I know this is a lot to throw at people, Ms. Koch said, apparently reading my mind. Let's go back to the perception box. That's where this begins and ends. She jumped to her feet and started writing on a whiteboard, calling out each word with a, flourish in a, with a flourish in a demonstration of one of her workshops. I don't matter. I'm not good enough. I'm bad. She asked me to envision a person, a writer perhaps. This person misses deadlines because they are constantly worrying about making it perfect, she said. It has to be better. It has to be better. No, 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 no. Not there yet. 
That thinking can be painful and ultimately even professionally paralyzing. That person is running a perception box story in their head, she said, and it's an obvious one. I'm not good enough. I grimaced and told her that I could be that writer. <laughs> what a fucking easy mark. Oh what if the, dude, the Scott Rowe, the publicist who fucking placed this piece, like he's like, they're not, Ms. Coke is not paying him enough money because he sourced the absolutely perfect pigeon for this absolute horseshit. Uh, who are you still trying to please? And who are you still rebelling against? She asked me, now firmly in teacher student mode. I squirmed and thought about how it was really stupid of me to say no to that blanket. Probably daddy, I said, almost in a whisper. She sighed and sat down. I have that issue too, you she said. put that in your article? <laughs> Probably daddy? Have some yeah, fucking yeah. pride, you fucking asshole. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to uh, skip a little ahead. Uh, so it says, uh, people who prattle on about wellness and self-investigation can be exhausting. Oh, no, not another trendy product or program or yoga class or brain exercise or therapy or gauzy self-help book. McKinsey and Company estimates that wellness is a $1.5 trillion global in industry with annual growth of up to 10%. Sleep consultants, ketamine clinics, de cleanses, detox, uh, neuros neuroceuticals, meditation apps, wellness tourism, Instagram influencers peddling holistic everything. Perception box? Some of what I hear in the wellness space makes my eyes roll, said Lisa Feldman Barrett, a neuroscientist and professor of psychology at Northeastern University. But I think that Elizabeth is doing very, very admirable work to get people to be more empathetic toward one another and to help people realize the ways in which their own past experience influences who they are in the present. Your brain is making predictions about what's going to happen next and what you will do next, what you will see next, what you will feel next, and those predictions come from your past experience. I'm I'm seeing the future here. Uh, if you want to live in in the cube and you want to get your nutrient pellets and access to uh, a metaverse lifestyle where you get to fulfill your your mission in life uh, by by collecting tokens to keep the water wheels turning somewhere, you first have to put your head into the perception box and then get dosed with a refined uh, recipe of MK Ultra mind altering drugs. Until you love Big Brother, you love uh, the the Big Coke sister, and then they'll let you out to to uh, to live amongst them because they could know that you actually do like them. You're not just saying that. Uh, but yeah, but like I mean, like it, it's interesting to think about things in terms of the perception box because once you understand the perception box, then you'll begin to notice that perhaps. You, your past experiences in childhood is what's leading you to feel a la like to feel a deficit of empathy towards the Coke family and their wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Coke is self-conscious about coming across as one of these hippy dippy woo woo people, as she put it. But there is also no way around it. Ms. Coke is a bit woo woo, even by California standards. She seeks out the occasional shaman. As part of her own mental health journey, she has explored psychedelics as medicine. Psychedelics remain mostly illegal, but regulators are moving forward, uh, moving toward the approval of MDMA and psilocybin, the psychoactive component in magic mushrooms, as therapist-supervised treatments for post-traumatic stress and depression. When I did my own MDMA therapy, there were Looney Tunes characters coming out of my body, Ms. Coke told me, matter-of-factly. The witch, Sylvester, that Viking chick who sings opera. When I was little and forming my perception box, I sucked them in somehow. So, okay, first of all, what kind of Molly was she doing? That's what I want to know. She sounds like she was candy flipping because uh, when I'm like, you know, when you're rolling face, I'm not seeing fucking Looney Tunes characters. I'm also not sucking in anyone's soul. I um, don't think I've ever had that experience with Molly. She was off a bean and talking to Sylvester the cat. Uh, she goes to say like, uh, this is the offspring of Charles Koch. Uh, you know, getting, getting faced off Molly and hanging out with fucking Marvin the Martian. Uh, Mr. Koch declined to be interviewed. In an email, he said he was delighted and couldn't be more proud that his daughter had dedicated her life to making the world a better place for everyone. She stopped <laughs> bugging me about it. That's what I really love about this. Is that she's just her doing her own thing and she's not at the dinner table in my fucking ear. But like, I mean, it's just the 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 fucking gall of these people who's like, yeah, I've I've like I made sixty six billion dollars by making the world the worst place for everyone. So like now 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 my fucking idiot daughter is gonna come around and give everyone Molly so that they can feel better about it. I love the idea of um her daughter being sent back in time or the the daughter being sent back in time to explain this to Joseph Stalin, <laughs> uh, the coach. Uh, 
one of the coach's first big business partners. Uh, Charles continues, we wanted our kids to discover their gifts and where they could passionately apply them to help others improve their lives, he said. For most of us, this takes time and involves struggle and trial and error. Our children were no exceptions. <laughs> So it's like he's uh, already already uh, 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 sort of hipping you to the error part of this trial. So it says, uh, Ms. Koch's fascination, some might say obsession, with self-identity and perception started when she was growing up in Wichita, Kansas. She attended private school, as did her brother Chase, who is two years younger. He runs Coke Disruptive Industries, a venture capital firm connected to Coke Industries, a constellation of businesses that include oil refineries, medical devices, fertilizers, chemicals, paper products, and batteries. It's not like growing up in New York City where a lot of people are wealthy, she said. We were very different in Wichita. I had so much fear that people would hate me. That must have been very, very othering. Um, I can really, <laughs> really see where the uh, perception box took hold. Uh, as an adult, she said therapists helped her realize that much of what she was telling herself was not real. <laughs> yeah, no one hates you. Okay. Uh, they should, but they don't. Great therapist. <laughs> Most of her anguish, uh, he explained... Uh, had to do with her, my own stories about never being good enough, the ones I made up in my head. That's where I got trapped. I mean, once again, this is just like, if you are the child of billionaires, you can, you can like take a load off. You don't ever have to be good enough ever. It's not a problem. It's not an issue for you. You, like, you can just exist. There's nothing you can do that will ever make you not wealthy. Just have fun. Take Molly in like a non-therapeutic context. How yeah, about that? Just like, it's like, the fact is, Nobody actually does hate her. Yeah. Who, the, the stuff that her family has done has made the world, as you said, a worse place. And she, the money that she has is, is, is tainted by that. But her specific personality, nobody thinks enough about her. Nobody th that's that the real problem here is not that what other people think of you. It's that you can't stop thinking about yourself for five <laughs> yes, fucking yes. seconds. This is the first time I've ever heard of Liz Coke. Well, that's yeah. the thing, Will. You, you were just talking about how the, the PR guy is not getting paid enough. The mere fact that he's doing his job is making people aware of her, and now they are hating <laughs> now her. Now they hate Yes. <laughs> Talk about a perception box. Jesus Christ. Yeah, maybe this, is, this all could be, though, like a, uh, a honeypot deal where they're drawing out people on social media saying, fuck this lady, so that you know uh, perception box uh, extraction teams can show up at their house and put him into a van and then give him the fucking uh, the Mel Gibson and conspiracy theory. Trip. <laughs> um, as it, so she says, um, as she worked to untangle her knots, she did a lot of searching. She was an editor for a literary humor magazine called Opium. She tried to write a novel. She's still trying. It's about 1,400 pages with 24 major characters and 30 plot lines. She went that to per per great. <laughs> How come how come every every single child of um immense wealth like just sent to millionaires to billionaires um tries to get or start writing a satirical magazine It's uh, yeah oh, the literary journal literary humor magazine Opium after editing her humor magazine, she went to Peru to experience ayahuasca, the vomit inducing hallucinogenic tea. Another time, she found herself in a nudist colony. In 2015, she started a book imprint called Catapult. Cries for Help, Various, was its first title. This month, Catapult shut down its online magazine and writing program to ensure a successful future for its core book business. Ms. Koch also dabbled in film finance, serving as an executive producer for Beasts of No Nation, starring Idris Elba and Harriet, which was nominated for two Oscars. I found her easygoing and upbeat. She laughed when I asked how much money she had inherited. I pressed, and Mr. Rose, seated nearby, piped up with no comment. One minute, wow. Ms. Coke. <laughs> this guy is just, uh, no one really chases the story quite like this guy. Jesus fucking Christ. If this guy doesn't get a job as a PR hack for Coke Industries after all this, he should kill himself. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, 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 skip ahead to things like I feel like in no in nowhere in this article does it actually describe like what no, what like how learning about a perception box is supposed to help you or why that this is like a multi hundred million dollar nonprofit business model. Like it just seems like a bunch of 
uh, daffy lectures for equally stupid uh, uh, dingbats to fucking, uh, again, to essentially recreate what is what therapy has been for the last hundred years, but in a like slightly different context or like. Uh, That's about know. her. Yeah, it's about her. And it's also um, the main thrust of it seems to be that like you should never feel bad about like literally anything. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, nothing you're complicit in, nothing that you possibly inherited, uh, no source of your comfortable lifestyle, nothing. None of it is your fault. Uh, you should not, you know, uh, give up any of the, any of the uh, lifestyle benefits that come from come from that. Uh, just perceive that perceive that box and all, all will be well. And I suppose it would be um, activist journalism if this uh, New York Times person like maybe interrogated her claim that she is apolitical just a little bit further than just allowing her to say it and go unremarked upon. Because like the fact that she has all this money to play around with and like her husband is like her chief financial officer, it just like it gives a lot of the idea that like, yeah, this seems like hippie woo woo shit. But, like you cannot there is nothing apolitical about the existence of this person or why she's being written about in the fucking New York Times. So I'm just going to skip ahead to the end here. It is possible that Ms. Koch will turn unlikely collaborators and her perception box credo into a success. This isn't a three to five year plan, said Mr. Gorin, the financial and operations chief. She has a multi-decade vision, a multi-decade vision for one of the most fucking for this absolute drivel. For this, for, for well, an idea, I mean, there there is a multi decade vision. It's just you know hanging out and uh, yeah, using your neo Freudian techniques to not feel bad about who you are. That is no, uh, that 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 is certainly a multi decade vision. <laughs> this is uh, it's like uh, she's providing the opposite of what that shrink that Carmela goes to does. Yeah, to, does yeah. For her. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> she's like oh no no it's just it's not your husband it's the perception box that he's put you in or that you find yourself in you're telling yourself a story about your ill-gotten wealth um that's that's a negative one so just change the story um it says here uh she but she will never escape the coke box some people oh, will always no. want something <laughs> uh, that, uh, some that, that, i mean i just personally speaking being trapped in the Coke freestyle box sounds like heaven to me. <laughs> Love that. But that would be that's all the therapy I need. Put yeah, a, one man I guess one man one man's pleasure box is another man's uh pain hole. I, I don't know. Pain box? <laughs> yeah. It's a hole. It's a pain hole. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pain hole. So it says, uh, but she will never escape the Coke box. Some people oh, always no. want something from her and that, she, and that she is either uninterested or unwilling to give. Allyship in a fight against her father's, father's politics, in particular, his opposition to climate change laws. It's time to hold Elizabeth Koch accountable for her family's role in the climate crisis, read a headline on a Medium article last year. She's never said or done anything to distance herself from her family. Hilary Plum, an author and academic, wrote in Fence, a nonprofit literary magazine. Again, like, I'm just, the main thing this article is doing is, is cluing me into the existence of a, a number of magazines that I'm going to have to subscribe to, like yeah, there's, Opium there's and Lork Fence. And yeah, and holy and... fuck. I mean, uh, can we just get rid of nonprofit as a tax status? Jesus. I mean, that is. Right. <laughs> I am fucking finish with this shit oh my god whether it's whether wh whether it's this fucking dingbat reinventing uh therapy uh specifically the therapist that uh meadow goes to in uh season <laughs> yeah it tells her to like fuck off from college and go to france and like sleep around yeah. <laughs> uh or or if it's just like you know uh magazines that are neither left nor right but uh you know whatever they are just get rid of the whole fucking thing. If it doesn't make a profit, it should not exist. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to Post think that, office like, this runs in a fucking profit. I'd like to think that this whole perception box charade is just like a, a multi-million dollar endeavor to help her get over that medium post she read about how she, yeah. <laughs> is it she's Every accountable time she for her, her eyes, she just sees the type and her, behind her eyelids. So uh, at the end of the article, it says here, Ms. Gregorian, the former Warner Brothers executive and unlikely collaborator as president, knows that the Cokes are radioactive in certain circles. But because of that very and reason... Literally. 
<laughs> because of that very reason, she said, Ms. Koch was uniquely suited to lead conversations about bridging divides. Coming from Hollywood, so much of my world was manufactured authenticity, completely and utterly manufactured, Ms. Gregorian said. Yeah, With Elizabeth, not real what like you see you. is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real Elizabeth. bitch. I, 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 you know, when I, I like to put my hair in a messy bun and put on some coffee, put on some gangster rap, and then go to my family's uh, chemical human hunting chemical, grounds, chemical warfare plant, and handle it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, coming from Hollywood, everything was so manufactured. But with Elizabeth, yeah. what you see is what you get. I'm and I'm sorry, so uh, Scott, Scott Rowe, if you're <laughs> fake Scott Rowe, P- bullshit. <laughs> Scott Rowe, PR genius. Uh, that's a demerit that you allowed the last word in this article to be someone saying, "With Elizabeth, what you see is what you get." Yeah, a fucking complete dilettante. <laughs> complete nitwit an empty-headed scion of privilege with nothing to offer or say that's been given a hundred million dollar busy box to play in to make herself feel good that's exactly what i see yeah exactly what i get what you see is what you get is also something you could say about like the three stooges <laughs> no the three no, office no, gentlemen no bullshit with these guys i was skeptical this is another whether perfect advertisement for 100 percent estate tax total confiscation of wealth from one generation to the another not allowing anybody to inherit basically anything because it's not good for them forget about like punishing them or saying they didn't earn it or anything like that just on a humanitarian level it is bad for their souls and their minds and their lives they become miserable at this end this late stage uh, of capitalism there is nothing but a this neurotic fixation on the self. There is no other horizon but to to maniacally spend all this money you have can only be put inward uh, to, to to chase uh, some sort of absolution that can never come. Like this, this money is an actual literal curse to everyone who has it, and they sh- it should be taken because they would be so much happier if they didn't have this. There'd be so much. Imagine if you just have like a nice little, uh, you know, guaranteed floor on your lifestyle that's below which you can't go, but you can't have this much money. How would anyone's life be worse? It would be materially better for the people who would be able to live who otherwise wouldn't. And for everybody like this, who is otherwise just cursed to spend their entire life trying to justify themselves to a God who isn't there. Yeah, um, I am. I, I am on. I am on record as absolutely despising this fucking guy because of his whole like. Um, well, you know, I'm a billionaire, but I, I just, you know, I love drinking three cokes a day and driving my old shitty car and my house that I bought in 1947. Uh, Warren Buffett just says, you know, I, I, I like to put a nickel in a jar every day. Just, you know, <laughs> three, you know I, I, there's no better value than thriftiness. Like, I, I fucking hate that guy's bullshit, fucking disgusting act so much because he's such a rapacious, awful piece of shit. But he is right about one thing, and it's that um, he leaves his kids, like, um... He's only leaving his kids like eight million dollars, uh, which I think is, you know, the perfect amount if you're gonna have kids the likes of uh, Warren Buffett. Well, I haven't, I haven't, or or or, 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 or this fucking dummy. I mean, <laughs> like, like, like giving giving this woman a hundred million dollars is just. I mean, we're seeing the result. She invented a form of therapy that's even more annoying. <laughs> Well, the proof is in the pudding because I've never heard from I've I've never heard word one from any of Warren Buffett's cretinous offspring, uh, promising me uh, promising to fl- fling open the boxes of perception and free me from uh, childhood traumas that are telling stories about myself that predict my future actions. Well, Warren Buffett's kids are actually kind of cool. Uh, the um, the son is kind of like a Jimmy Buffett type guy. The daughters are like. Um, you know, those women who are just, like, super involved in condo boards, but in a nice way. The type of woman who organizes potlucks. That type, yes. that, that type of uh, broad. I don't know. Uh, Warren Buffett, awful guy. Should be beheaded. Just an awful, rapacious capitalist. Uh, speaking of railroads, 
just um, a, a world of awful railroads, a horrible union buster, complete fucking monster. But uh, his, his kids, uh, you know, I find them quite charming. All right. Well, uh, article, just the last last line of the article. I was skeptical when I met her, Ms. Gregorian added, and then I just opened up to her. It is as if she hip- had hypnotized me. So, wow. Well, so there you go. I mean, she uh, did. Uh, Elizabeth she Coke. did. She gave you the most bullshit fucking pitch ever, and you are fully on board. She completely hypnotized <laughs> you. You are a fucking dope. <laughs> so that is uh, that is Elizabeth Koch, uh, courtesy of the... Uh, the objective news side of the New York Times, not the activist side, the news side that's bringing you important articles such as this one that are just thinly disguised PR pitches that's literally in the article. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, one of my least favorite things from the Trump years was uh, the thing every week where people would get fucking furious at the New York Times over, you know, whatever. Whenever when they, they would like, uh, I don't know, I guess write about Trump like he was a normal president. But um, this is this is worse. This is markedly worse. Just treating this fucking dummy like she has anything of value to say to anyone. Well, uh, listener, I uh, thank you for suffering through that pain hole with us. I hope your your box is open and you are perceiving things as uh, with with clarity and empathy, as is what is so important in life. So uh, I guess leave it there for today, fellas. Mm. Yeah, right when I have uh, probably the least empathy I have ever felt ever in my entire life. I'm going back to my pain hole. All right. Uh, And uh, yeah, best of luck with everyone's pain holes out there. Yeah. Get get through them. Keep keep digging and keep just dig your way out of that pain hole. Everybody. Yeah. And if your wife, uh, if your wife isn't letting you look into her box, um, I don't know, uh, reassure her that it is not so bad at the end of the day that, um, she, uh, is the heir to a, uh, deca billion dollar fracking fortune. 